Motions, motion, motion numéro un. Oh, sorry. Senator Galvez. Once offering, I may not have seen the buffalo roam, I may not have seen the eagle fly, but deep inside my soul, the great one planted a seed to grow. How I wish I had been able to roam like the buffalo and fly like the eagle so high, so I may too touch the mountain tops that reach for the sky. Just as I see you all people here today, all of different shades and creeds, not one person, but all people have added color to my eyes so that I may see. So glorious is every day that we all have another day to breathe. This poem was written by Cherry Jubinbill, a First Nation member of the Enoch Creek Nation. Dear Senators, I rise in this chamber today to speak to the motion of the speech from the throne. In my first address to the Senate and in tribute to Earth Day on April 22nd, I want to honor Mother Nature because planet Earth is our only home. Without nature, we don't have city, no state, no society. From space, the only visible divisions are mountains, rivers, oceans, all of which were naturally created. On December 4, 2015, the Governor General, His Excellency, the Right Honorable David Johnston, stated, start quote, the government will prove to Canadians and to the world that a clean environment and a strong economy go hand in hand. We cannot have one without the other. Protecting the environment and growing the economy are not incompatible goals. In fact, our future success demands that we do both." End of quote. My path has led me to understand that without a clean, flourishing environment, we as humans cannot thrive. Let me describe to you what is the path that has led me to this conviction. My paternal grandfather worked as an architect and engineer in Peru. As a teenager, I would be in housing construction where he supervised well drilling from, dink from dinkering water. My maternal grandmother was a wise woman. She did not know how to write or read, but she was rich with traditional knowledge. I hiked the Andes with her into the Amazon jungle in search for medicine plants. I assisted here with delivering babies. I love and admire both my grandparents. They show me that we must seek equilibrium between learning from nature and development at its expense. I'm very lucky. At 10 years old, I knew what I wanted to do. Shocked by pictures of air pollution in Beijing and Mexico cities, I envisioned myself creating mechanical tools to clean air and oceans. So I studied engineering, which was very demanding. I had to bring my strong, stubborn head to school. 500 students, one woman, me. It was, however, a good preparation for the real and scientific research. Still today, only few women succeed in this field. C'était un état d'excitation que je suis arrivé au Canada avant quatre ans. Trente-deux ans plus tard, je suis aussi fébrile d'être encore hors de ma zone de confort, ravie d'apprendre à devenir sénatrice. Mon grand-père disait que c'est notre relation avec les risques qui détermine notre succès dans la vie. À grand risque, grand résultat. So now, how can my knowledge and experience be of useful to the Senate? I reflect aloud. How does a nation reach its full potential? Some meet the basic people's needs, government, healthcare, within an infrastructure that supports public access to these services. Nations that aspire for more develop arts and culture, maintaining equality and human rights through a justice system. But how does a nation reach enlightenment? For that, we must deploy greater efforts for the elevation of humanity through the observation and exploration of nature by science and art. Le philosophe Seneca écrit, la vraie sagesse n'est pas de s'éloigner de la nature, 
mais de façonner son comportement selon les lois et son modèle. Le professeur Covey ajoutait « Les siècles ont été marqués par ceux qui, comme Sénèque, ont longuement réfléchi non seulement aux lois de la nature, mais au désir que l'homme a éclairé sa propre existence à leur lumière et de vivre en harmonie avec elle. L'urgence humaine de renoncer à certaines pratiques vient d'une menace planétaire qui semble se profiler à l'horizon, résultat des sensibilités humaines. Le Canada est sur le bord d'une renaissance et on ne doit pas manquer le bateau. Si nous, sénateurs, sommes nommés pour servir les Canadiens, nous devons progresser vers cette voie. Le chemin est clair. Nous devons promouvoir l'acquisition des connaissances pour la protection de notre planète. En science, toute découverte débute par une question. Le défi est de poser les bonnes questions. À grandes questions, grandes réponses. Trouver ces réponses requiert de l'engagement, de dévouement, de la persévérance. Nous expérimentons pour prouver ou réfuter nos hypothèses. Nous échangeons avec nos collègues. Nos résultats sont examinés par un processus rigoureux qui cherche à valider nos résultats, à augmenter la connaissance à travers le débat et toujours défier le statu quo en faveur du progrès et de l'innovation. La connaissance est infinie. Knowledge is infinite. This process is the scientific method. This is what I have done for my entire professional life. And, I'm, and the most beautiful part of the scientific method is that it doesn't care for beliefs or opinions. They are just hypotheses on which to base or start our analysis. Without science, hypotheses remain a debate a discussion. But to progress, we need facts and evidence on which to base decisions and actions. This is the thinking that I want to bring to the Senate. Knowledge increases with education, and it should never be viewed as a privilege, because it's a right fundamental to our growth as individuals and as society. In an advanced society, the selection is not made on fitness. It's made based on knowledge and wisdom. I echo the words of brave Malala, yesterday's speech. Those, those with knowledge must demand access for those without knowledge. We have a remarkable authority as senator, and we must help break the barriers to the diffusion of knowledge. It is only through education that we can stimulate shifts in thoughts and paradigms and effect necessary changes to our lifestyles. Education must be democratized, consistent with how we have democratized society. Isn't it remarkable and yet confusing that we have had so many technological advances that have changed our life dramatically in medicine, space exploration, armament, communication, but we still teach using desks and blackboards? Even more dramatic, let me illustrate this by analogy. In the, if the 4.5 billion year history of Earth want to, was to be condensed in one year, we could say that dinosaurs appear on December 16 and that they were extinct nine, nine days later. Humans appear at 23 hours on December 31st. So in relative terms, we are just one hour old. We are so young and have walked this planet for such a little time. Yet, arrogantly, we have inflicted dramatic changes to our entire planet. La plus grande source de connaissances et de sagesse est la nature. La nature est efficace, elle, elle s'adapte, elle est habile. Nous devons travailler en accord avec elle. Notre futur dépend de cette relation symbiotique. Further, nature is the greatest teacher. She taught humans the master tool for development, trial and error. For that to work, 
we must learn from our mistakes. Toutefois, notre approche à l'utilisation des ressources naturelles n'est pas en cohérence avec les principes du développement durable. Notre désir insatiable de consommation et d'expansion a endommagé notre demeure. Nous sommes devenus les victimes de notre propre succès. Nous sommes maintenant témoins des événements climatiques extrêmes jamais vus par les humains. A fundamental cause is the present economic model. They are present on infinite production supposing infinite growth, which again is incoherent with finite resources. Production models are linear, based on extract, transform, produce, use, and throw. We are wasting unique and irreplaceable resources. Almost half of what is extracted is thrown as waste. Growth has had large hidden costs, a scarcity of natural resources and environmental damage. Does it make sense to burn in brief minutes liters of gasoline while driving alone in our vehicles when we know that nature took millions of years to fabricate this resource? Our routines are inconsistent with this common sense. We have knowledge, but we are not wise. Nous devons conserver et protéger nos ressources non renouvelables et restaurer l'environnement dégradé. Ma logique me dirige dans cette direction. Mon éthique et code de l'ingénieur m'oblige à veiller pour la santé et la sécurité du public. Ma réflexion culturelle et spirituelle me pousse dans le même sens. Mon instinct maternel animal me presse à protéger ma progéniture. Vous comprenez? C'est une conviction très profonde que j'ai. Je suis ici devant vous comme scientifique devenue sénatrice pour vous demander de travailler ensemble afin de promouvoir des changements essentiels à notre survie. My science, moral or ethical pressure may not move all of us. Maybe economics will. Corporations thought lower production costs by moving their manufacturing to cheaper labor countries. Now the air in many manufacturing cities is unbreathable and their water is not drinkable. The World Bank and Chinese government have estimated that the hidden cost of China's growth reached 148 billion US dollars. That's almost 6% of China's GDP. Ce mouvement vers une main d'oeuvre moins chère a entraîné une série d'effets négatifs, néfastes, la perte d'emploi, parfois la perte de la qualité de vie, un déséquilibre socio-économique, causant en partie la méfiance grandissante de la classe ouvrière envers la classe politique et les institutions démocratiques telles que la nôtre. We urgently need a change in approach. Wiser societies are changing economic models based on non-renewable resources to a knowledge economy. Remember, knowledge is infinite. Canada is almost there. By embracing an emerging knowledge economy, we are creating exportable skills based on innovation and investment and technology. Future growth will not be based on low production costs, but rather on offering clean environments where to live. Production must stop its linearity and become circular through reusing, recycling, and reduction of natural resources extraction. Waste should be eliminated or seen as new resource. Canada is well placed to say that climate change is not an inconvenient truth, but or could be a convenient opportunity. Canada can leverage its institu institutional structures, advanced learning, communication networks, clean energy resources, agricultural potential, women workforce, our diplomatic approach, and its incredible government-private effective partnerships in commerce, research, and technology to become and remain a leader in knowledge economy. The last World Economy Forum predicted that 5 million jobs 
will be lost before 2020, as artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology will replace the need for human workers. But those same advances will create 2.1 million new jobs. The manual and clerical workers who find themselves out of work are unlikely to have the required skills to compete at most new jobs will be specialized in specialized areas such as computing, mathematics, architecture, engineering, and increasing needs for arts and creativity. A recent report by International Energy Agency stated that limiting global warming to two degrees is technically possible, but will require an energy transition of exceptional scope, depth, and speed. It will need an unparalleled ramp up of all car low carbon technologies to be used in all countries. These means to achieve are there. The means to achieve are there. Increase awareness technological advances, and a time frame of 30 years. Specifically, it can be done by increasing energy and material use efficiency, higher deployment of renewable energy, and a fundamental orientation of investment, together with concern and consistent policy to facilitate energy transition. Excuse me, uh, Senator, I'm very sorry, but your time has expired. Are you asking for five more minutes? Yes, please, can I? Agreed, honorable senators. Senator Galvez. Further, the energy sector could create more than 6 million additional jobs by 2050. Improvements, economy, social, and environmental aspects could generate benefits far beyond business as usual. One of the roles of the Senate is to reveal verified information and develop policies and bills that can unlock the described benefits. Evidence is there showing that the responsible private sector is activated, but needs clear and credible long-term policy frameworks that will provide the right incentive. In sum, the message is clear. Equate carbon reduction with clean technology in a circular economy and job creation. A number of experts are courageously asking, what is the cost of continuing doing business as usual? And to whom does it benefit? If the planet warms by two degrees by 2,100, the UK Royal Society expects to see a third of the world's currently cultivated agricultural land disappear, and an increase in water stress for 410 million people. The UN estimates that one person every second has been displaced by a disaster, with an average of 22 million people displaced by climate or weather-related events since 2008. Choosing to solve pollution problems and climate disasters rather than preventing them is largely more expensive. The damage are paid by citizens and not necessarily by polluting corporations. Among a multitude of examples, just let me give you two. Enbridge was fined 61 million as part of an overall 177 million settlement for a massive spill in Kalamazoo River. The spill requires a billion dollars to clean up. Closer to us, the Quebec government submitted a claim against the rail company behind the deadly train disaster in Megantic, estimating the cost of 400 million. The spill reached 180 now downstream Shodia River, where fish still present deformations and tumors. I was there at Lake Megantic. I witnessed the devastation of a city, its citizens, and its environment. Je comprends que la politique existe à tous les niveaux. Je ne suis pas à l'abri de son influence, mais vous trouverez que elle motive peu mes décisions. Je suis avant tout un scientifique qui analyse et évalue les faits. Je suis une sénatrice indépendante. Mes décisions ne seront pas influencées par la personne qui argumente, mais plutôt par la vérité et la solidité de ces évidences présentées. Now, I'm called honorable senator. It is quite a title. And I want my thoughts and actions to be deserving of such an honor. I want to earn respect by reflecting values and principles that
that account for themselves. It is so much easier to live each day with the certainty in one's conviction and to act in accordance with them, to treat others with respect, to show fairness by being just, to make decisions others can hopefully perceive as wise, to vote, seek, and keep peace in harmony with nature. Thank you very much.